All right. Since, uh, Excellent. All righty then. So yeah, let's get on with today's session by first of all, getting ourselves nice and comfortable in a relaxed position, wherever you are, however that looks for you. And let's just start to focus on that breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth and start to settle us down and start to step away from our days and into this session here. And with that breathing, just nice and slow. It doesn't matter if it's slow to begin with, but as long as we're graduating towards that. Just in through the nose, out through the mouth. And each time you do, focus on that breath. So focus on the in breath, focus on the out breath, and just let all the worries of our day just wash away. They'll still be there after the session, but right now, during this time, we can just focus on the here and now. And keeping that breathing going. Every time we're breathing in, just picturing that good energy, just filling up your body as you breathe in through the nose. And as you breathe out through the mouth, it just relaxes down and not just relaxes our body, but also the nervous system relaxes the mind and just brings everything to a sense of calmness here. And now as we start to relax, let's start to put some intention within the session. So let's start with, first of all, thanking ourselves for being here today. For taking this time to work on our mental, our physical well-being. And to also remind ourselves to keep focused as we go through. Anytime we're feeling distracted or our mind starts to wander, as soon as we catch that, bring it back to the breathing, focusing on that. That's going to help ground us throughout the session. That's going to help us to stay in the zone, help us to have that mind-muscle connection, the connection with the breathing also as we go through the session today. So by now we're starting to feel really relaxed. The heart rate's dropped down. The breathing is nice and steady. The body's starting to just ease into where it is. Picturing that breath as so it comes in through the nose, down into the lungs, into the heart, getting pumped around the body, back into the heart, into the lungs, and then up and out through the mouth. Now, as we start to breathe in, we're going to slowly start to sit up where we are if we've relaxed down into it. So each in-breath now is sitting up nice and tall, getting some length through that spine after a couple of breaths. Feel your head, your spine being pulled by a string up through the ceiling. Elongating that spine out the best we can here.
As we breathe in, we're going to bring the shoulders up as high as we can and then bring them back down as you breathe out. So bring them, when you breathe in, bring the shoulders up, squeeze in those shoulder muscles there. And as you breathe out, relaxing it back down again, really pulling the shoulders right the way down as much as you can as you breathe out. You might even find a bit of a stretch at the bottom as you breathe out, bring those shoulders down, feeling a stretch across the top of the chest, almost in the collarbones. We're going to put one hand up in the air the best we can. And we're going to repeat that breathing technique. As we breathe in, we're going to lift the shoulder up. And as we breathe out, we're going to bring it down. So the only movement here should really be in the shoulder blade. As the hand sort of extends out in front of you. The best we can, or up above you. And then as you breathe out, bringing it down. we're doing here is mobilizing that shoulder blade so often when we reach above we have a lack of control within this area we use other muscles and don't use the muscle that is designed for that extra reach Let's change arms to the other side. And as you do this, as you stretch up, you should be able to feel a little bit of a stretch through sort of the armpit area. I know not everyone can bend or fully straighten their arms here, but if you see with my arm, I'm not bending it down as I'm bringing it down. It's the shoulder blade that is controlling that movement there. So that's what we're trying to aim for, movement in the shoulder blade. And those spinal movements we do, the flexion, extension, rotation, and those, they really help with allowing the shoulder blades to move as freely as possible. Excellent work. Let's bring that arm down. We're going to go up to the other, no, the first hand again. So as we breathe in, we lift the hand up and then breathe out. We're going to reach it right the way out to the side and down. Then we're going to switch the hand. So breathing in, lifting it up right the way up as high as you can as you breathe out, bringing it down to the side. Excellent work. Trying to feel a stretch right the way through the movement. So Feeling the stretch from here, feeling the stretch all right the way as you pull it out to the side. Just repeating through that, linking in the breath as always together. You don't have to follow with my timing, follow with your breath, however that is. And don't worry if it's slower or faster or the same, just do what works for you here.
Yeah, we're going to continue the same theme with using those shoulder blades only. Instead, we're going to bring the hand forward. So you notice on here, my arm comes forwards, but the body stays still. So that's the aim here. So we're going to bring that hand forwards and then back. And then forwards and then back. So we're just going to do it with the one hand. So as you link the breathing in as well, so that it comes forwards and then it comes back. And as it comes back, we're going to squeeze that shoulder blade back. So it's going back as far as it can and then going forwards. And this is really helping to mobilize that shoulder blade, as we said, but also to help mobilize that ball and socket joint. So keep it going there. We've got in our shoulder, we've got a socket and a ball and it's helping to move it in there in the range that it's designed to. So bring it forward, really stretch it forwards as far as you can forwards without leaning forwards. And as you come back, squeezing that back muscle to hold it in place there and then going back and forth. Really good stuff. Let's change arms to the other side. And then reaching forwards with this one. And then reach. Squeezing those shoulder blades back. Really great work, everybody. Good. Back to the first arm. This time we're going to go forwards, stretch it forwards as far as we can, reaching up and over, rotating as you come round, stretching it down to the back. Onto the other hand. So forwards, but we don't lean forwards. We push that hand forwards as far as we can without leaning. Up and over, round to the back. Good work. So again, we're not leaning forwards, we're just trying to stretch using that shoulder joint to move the arm forward rather than relying on our spine and the core muscles to do so. You might notice as you do this, you get a little bit extra of a stretch. You might even feel it's like down the arm a little bit in the forearms, even like down the elbow area. And sometimes this is stretching the ligaments and the muscles, but sometimes it's even stretching the nerves because the nerves also get tight. They also shorten with the rest of it. So it can feel a little bit of a weird sensation that sometimes is it just on a bit as well, oh, doesn't feel quite like a stretch. Sometimes that's stretching the actual, the nerves within you as well themselves. And they obviously do need to be stretched because when we stretch our muscles, they've got nerves in them and they get stretched as well at the same time. But when we go through these ranges of motion, it just really accentuates that. Good, okay, so what we're gonna do we continue the theme of using our shoulder blades, but we're going to have something. So I've got like a little table here. You can use an arm of a sofa or the desk in front of you. I know some of you are at desk. Close to about destroying all the plants on it. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to have the hands on the desk. And we're going to bring ourselves closer and then further away. But you notice here that it's my shoulder blades that are doing the motion. So much like we're going forwards and back, with that hands, it's not the top, it's not the core or the spine dictating the movement, it's the shoulders. So we're bringing our chest forwards and then bringing it back. So it's like rounding the back, like the shoulders here on that bit. And then as we come forwards, we're push, pushing the chest through. So going back and forth between those. So 
So the arms won't be bending here. Arms stay straight. Coming through that. And don't worry if you haven't got a fantastic range of motion. That is absolutely fine. There's always a starting point. And as you do this, you'll probably feel this stretch in places that you may never have ever felt stretched before, like deep within the shoulder. Right. Sometimes I'm like, I can't even tell where that is. Somewhere, somewhere in there. I just can't tell where. And this is stretching those deep rotator cuff muscles. And also one that we call the serratus anterior, which is the one. I remember the, the Latin name, but I've forgotten the common name. Um, well, they, they call it the boxers muscle. So it's the mu muscle that the boxers use to get that extra stretch. And it's one that comes, if you see like a really ripped guy, they got like these, like almost looks like teeth coming onto their, like shark teeth coming onto their rib cage. It's that muscle. And that's the muscle that's responsible for doing that action, essentially. So they call that the boxers muscle because it, it's that extra reach and that there. And it's just, so some of it's getting in there. It's, uh, it's quite a deep muscle. It only pokes out there, and then the rest of it's sort of underneath the lats and then coming up into sort of the armpit area. Anyway, let's ease out of that. And let's grab a little drink before we move on to the next bit. Just be interesting to hear, Liz. If how was that with your shoulders? That movements is it good? Yeah, good. I've 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 only done that with healthy shoulders, so I just wanted to make sure that it was it was okay. I did check with somebody that I know who's very good at that stuff, and he said they should be fine. But I just wanted to double check. <laughs> okay, good. Alrighty then. So let's move into some of that spinal movement that we uh, usually do. We we'll start from the top, and we'll work our way down. And um, we we'll start with um. The neck and we start just by nice and gentle going down in the flexion and then up through the extension just nice and gentle between the two there's no rush here Linking that breathing in if you're not already. And if you feel like your mind's wandered from the last short little break, just bring it back again with the breath, just focusing on breathing in and out, moving through that range of motion with the neck, and just focus on the movement and the breathing together. When you find yourself looking down, we're going to hold that position for a little bit here and just let gravity do its work. Just let the gravity take over, pulling down the head a little bit further, maybe. As long as it's not painful here, staying in a pain-free range of motion, that's good. Ease out of it, a couple of looking ups and downs. And then when you're ready to, when you're looking up next, we can start to look up and relax into that there.
And then if we keep our mouth closed, we just increase that stretch through the front of the neck, through those neck muscles. And ease out of it. Yeah, we're gonna go into the rotation next. So looking one side and the other, back and forth between the two. When we find ourselves looking left, we're going to hold it there. Feel a bit of a stretch as long as it's pain free. Just holding that position here for a little bit. Easing out a bit, a couple of times looking left and right. And let's bring our head around to the right side now, easing into that position, feeling a bit of a stretch here. Good work, everybody. Easing out of it there, doing a couple of looking left and right. And then we're bringing here to one shoulder and then to the other shoulder. Back and forth between the two. And when you find your left ear to the left shoulder, bring that there. And if you haven't already, we can drop that right arm down, increasing that distance between the right ear and the right shoulder and decreasing the distance between the left ear and the left shoulder. We're not looking for a massive stretch here. We're just trying to engage those muscles to stretch them out slightly. Easing out a bit, couple of lefts and right. And then bring the right ear to the right shoulder, left hand down. Easing out of it, doing a couple of side to sides. Good work. Okay, so we're going to continue with the neck um, before moving on to the rest of the spine. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase the stretch slightly on here. So what we want to do is um, tuck the chin down. So it's down and across. So it's almost like we're looking diagonally down, um, almost towards our elbow, if our elbow is towards our side. And then from there, we're going to put our hand on our clavicle. So you feel the clavicle, which is the bone running across between the top of the chest here. And you can feel it going along the top there and it connects to the shoulder. So it's a thin bone that goes all the way along there. So that's the clavicle. So you bring the chin down towards that clavicle, put the hand on it. And then we're going to come up and diagonally across, pulling away from that hand. And you'll notice there as you do so, because you put your hand on the clavicle, 
you increase that stretch quite a bit in that position. So we're gonna hold that there for a little bit. And then we're gonna ease out of it. We're gonna do that two more times from that position. So chin to the clavicle, looking down at the elbow, hand on the clavicle, coming up and across diagonally to the other side, just as much as you can bear on this. Obviously some of you are gonna be tighter than others on here, which is fine. So just go to where you can and you'll feel that stretch really increase there in that area. Good, easing out of it. Let's do one more time on that side before switching over. So chin down to clavicle, looking at the elbow, hand on the clavicle, coming up and across diagonally, feeling that stretch. Having the mouth closed as well increases that stretch slightly. And easing out of it here. Let's go to the other side. So come chin down, looking at the elbow on the clavicle on the other side, hand on there, coming up and across, feeling that stretch there. Good work. I can fit it maybe a little bit more on this side for myself. Easing out of it. Chin down into the right position on the clavicle, hand comes in on there and stretching away from it. Easing out of there one more time. Chin on the clavicle. Hand on the clavicle, stretching away, up and diagonal. And easing out of it. Okay, give you a neck. A gentle move around after that bit just to get it moving again good if you've ever been to a chiropractor or that you're whenever they do the stretch they kind of do the and you'll feel like they hold their hand about here and that's essentially what they're doing you're doing what they do essentially they're putting their hand there and what that does is it sort of holds the tendon in place there as you move because if you just go without it you'll notice there's not much of a stretch but it's still can be tight in those areas. So holding it there, going through it, just increases it there and it allows you to go for a greater range of motion. You might find that if you sort of put your head back and diagonal sort of thing, you just feel like it moves a lot easier. So that's kind of the idea of that. Excellent. Right, now let's move on to the rest of our spine now. So we go through the flexion extension to start with. And so we're coming through here. I think everybody here knows this all right. So if, by, by now. And if you've ever seen or done yoga or anything, um, we're in a regular yoga class or seen a regular one. They usually call this sort of stuff cat, um, cat camel or cat cow or some variation of animals beginning with C. Um, I'm starting to feel like for us sat in a chair, it's more like prawn when you rolled over and then high jumper as you go out for the top. So it's more, I'm going to call it prawn high jumper rather than cat cow. <laughs> Going to trademark that as well, so nobody steal it.
Okay, good one. Well, let's ease out of that one. And let's go into the rotation. Excellent. And I don't have a good name for this one, unfortunately, but it is like, imagine you've gone 4th of July, fireworks display, you put your chair in the wrong direction, you go, oh, it's over there, <laughs> behind me. <laughs> Great work, everybody. Okay, we're actually going to hold this one. So when we find ourselves around to the left, we're going to hold it in that position and just sort of relax here a little bit and breathe into it. You might find that your breath's a little bit more restricted as we're twisted. It's coming into that belly area, which is where we breathe down into via our diaphragm. So just breathing the best you can. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Just relax into this position. We're not trying to force anything here. We're just trying to breathe and relax. Let's ease out a bit. Let's do a couple of rotations before we go around to the right, just to ease out a bit. And then whenever you find yourself over to the right, we're just gonna hold that position. And again, just start to breathe into it the best you can here. Easing out of it again. Here we do a couple of left and rights if you need to. And then we go into the lateral flexion. So we reach down from one side, down to the other, and back and forth between the two here. When we find our left hand coming down, we're going to hold that position if we can, and then we're going to start to bring the other hand over the top, feeling that stretch through down like the back of the armpit area or just sort of down that side of our back there. And the side of the back is also just known as the side. I just realized that. <laughs> just, just here. <laughs> if you can, see if you can stretch that a little bit further even, increase that stretch. Then if you can't now breathe into it. And then ease out a bit. Let's do a couple of side to side just to get them moving again before we go. Having that right arm drop down when you're ready to, bringing the left hand over, or if you did the other this side already to the other side, and bringing that arm up and over. 
Feeling that stretch down the side. You can increase that stretch, breathe into it. Fantastic, everybody. Let's ease out of that. Good work. Well, let's do a couple of side to sides. And then let's go into our whirlpool just to finish off this little bit of spinal movement we've done here. Let's rotate the other way around now. So we're in Australia. He's out of that. Think of a nice little shake. Good, okay. So we're gonna sort of continue with a little bit of spinal movement um, and we're gonna do like a modified version of the one that we usually do. So usually we'd come down, come up with a flat back and then come up with a curl back. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down with a curl back the best we can and then come up with a curl back. So it's gonna be similar to the flex extension but really slowing it down. So first thing I want you to do is to picture in your mind you know, like in a science classroom, you've got a skeleton and you've got the vertebrae and each vertebrae is stacked on top of each other. That's what I want you to imagine. And if you ever have a play with one of those, they move and within that spine. And that's kind of what we're going to replicate there. We're going to try and sort of one by one, as smooth as we can, not like jerk it as we come down. We're just going to nice smoothly come down. So we're going to bring the chin to the chest first of all. You can follow along with me here. And then once the chin is right down the chest, we slowly curl over. So trying to picture the shoulders coming over first, the upper back, curling all the way down. It's going to be a little bit restrictive here as we come down through the mid back and the lower back, but just doing the best we can. And it's getting harder for me to talk as well because we're restricting the air a little bit. So curling down the best we can. Once you get down to as far as you think you can, we're going to slowly uncurl it again. So we're coming all the way back up, stacking it vertebrae on top of each other one by one, nice and slowly. Really trying to picture it. Yeah, nice and slowly. As you finish, the neck finishes the movement, that starts to uncurl, you start to look forwards. Yeah, let's go down again. Let's try and get a little bit slower even this time. So really try and Visualize it so the chin comes down first towards the chest, nice and slowly. And see, even if you can curl it even more than you think you can, you'll be surprised about how neck far the neck can curl over forwards as the rest of the spine starts to come down as well. Starting with the top, working our way down. And again, very difficult for me to talk at this point. Once you reach your maximum, you can start to unfurl. You can always use the back of your chair here as a bit of a reference. So feeling that back separate slowly and then join back in with the chair slowly as well, bringing down the end of that. No. Coming to the end of that movement with the neck coming up. And we go one more time. So coming right the way down. I'll let you do this in your own time. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, all the way down again, curving back out. Nice and slowly. Easing out to it, good. Let's give ourselves, when you're done, no rush here though, continue as you're going. Start to wiggle yourself if you've already come out of that. Excellent work. Okay, so we're going to have a little drink break and then we're going to go into a bit of an extended meditation here to finish off uh, today's session. So I'm going to grab a drink. You can do the same. So I am feeling a little bit tired today. So if I do fall asleep during this, <laughs> one, I'm doing a good job, but I'm doing too good of a job. <laughs> so uh, I, might keep, I might open my eyes every so often during this meditation bit, just to make sure I'm not nodding off. Sometimes I've been like, oh, that was close. <laughs> and I've been tired. So yeah, I'll do my best not to do so. But if, it, if I'm quiet for a long time, you know what's happened. So <laughs> just give me a silent nudge. <laughs> okay. Don't worry, I'll wait for listening. <laughs> okay, so let's start to uh, relax ourselves into the position. So however that is for you, get yourself nice and comfortable. And for this next sort of 12 minutes-ish, hopefully that's about time it'll take, uh, we're going to try and move as little as possible, okay? So find a position that's nice and comfortable for you, even if that's leaning forward slightly, if that's a little bit better for you, or arms on a desk or something like that, whatever works for you is absolutely fine there, because I know, Sometimes sitting up tall can be a little bit trickier as you get like five, 10 minutes into it. So when you found that comfortable position, let's start with the breathing first, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And then whenever you're ready to, you can start to close down the eyes. Focusing on the breath there, in through the nose, out through the mouth. We're in no rush here. So just eke it out, lengthen that breath. Just extend it to where it needs to be for you to relax into the position you're in. As you breathe in, just breathe in that goodness. And as you breathe out, just relax the way you are. Let the shoulders drop. Let everything sort of relax down just enough where you can still hold the position that you're in, but where you still feel relaxed in the, in the position you are. And what we're going to do today is explore our mind's eye, which is essentially the vision within our own mind. And what we're going to do with that, we're going to start ourselves walking. Or no, we're going to stay in a still position to start with, but we're going to start to slowly open the scene of a beach. So this could be a beach you're familiar with, that you've been to many times, maybe one you've seen on TV, or maybe one that is completely made up in your own imagination, whatever your perfect beach scene would be. There's no pressure here as to exactly what it looks like. We're going to flesh out the details as we go along. So first of all, we're going to imagine we're still seated 
at the edge of the beach, looking towards the water. And in your mind's eye, we're gonna look left and right down the beach, seeing it stretch far into the distance in either direction. We're gonna to start to notice the waves as they slowly crash up onto the beach. And as they do, imagining all the particles of sand that they pick up as they crash, as they pull it back out to sea, and as the wave comes over, it pushes new particles back up onto the sand. It's just the cycle here of pulling it out and then pulling it back. And almost feel like you're connected here with the wave. So your breath is going, connecting with the wave as it comes in, you're either breathing in or out. And as it comes out, you're doing the opposite. So whatever feels natural to you, link it with the waves, link it with the breath. And as you do so, let's start to bring our gaze up towards the sky and just start to notice the sky now. Let's have a nice blue sky with just a few clouds to keep it a little bit interesting. And we're going to notice those clouds just gently move across our vision. They're going from whichever direction feels good to you gradually moving, just as clouds do, nice and slowly, nice and gentle. And what I want you to do with your breath here is each time you breathe in, we're just gonna breathe in good energy. But as we breathe out, I want you to imagine your breath is just pushing those clouds along just a little bit more. We're not trying to make it go faster or slow, we're just trying to maintain its speed. Much like if you're a, a merry-go-round and you're pushing it, you're trying to maintain the speed as it goes around in a circle. As you're breathing out, you're just, you're the one that's moving those clouds. You're breathing in the good energy around you. You're breathing out, allowing those clouds to move on their journey. And as you've moved them, they've moved, it's clearing out the way and the sky is starting to become clearer now and the clouds have moved and you can start to feel the sun coming down and warming up the skin. Just bringing that, that heat onto the skin and warming you up from the inside. And as you do so, feel that sun's energy. As it heats you up, it's transferring its energy it's light energy into heat energy on you. It's literally giving you the energy to warm you up. And as it does, feel that energy go within you and to warm you up from the inside. And as that energy starts to spread throughout the body, from the heart emanating out right the way to the top of our heads, the tip of our fingers and our toes. It warms us up completely. In this position, we're gonna stay, but we're gonna to start to introduce maybe a little bit of sound if we haven't already. Maybe even hear the seagulls that are here with me, which has to the beach theme. But as we're here in this position, we're just going to maybe pitch, picture the sounds now of the waves crashing, maybe the sounds of people nearby having their 
beach time, maybe the birds in the sky or the wind coming and coming through the area. Whatever sounds make up your beach, that is what's important. And as you breathe in, take in those sounds, listen to it all, and it's soaking into you through the ears. And as you breathe out, you're relaxing down and then you come cycle back around again, breathing in. The sound comes in through the ears, and emanates throughout the body. Now let's start to introduce some smells to our image within our mind. So we've got the same beach, the same sky, the same sounds of the waves crashing and the wind blowing. We're just gonna bring the smell of the sea air in. Maybe there's an ice cream van nearby and you're smelling that sweet smell. Whatever it may be, bringing those smells into it, creating a more vivid experience of where you are now within that mind's eye. Good, okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some closing down of that now, but we're going to gradually do it. So keep that vision open, keep that mind's, open, mind's eye open, and let's start to close down the smells first of all, which is just leaving the, the sounds. It's leaving that temperature of the sun on your skin. It's leaving the visuals and obviously the breath continues here. So we start to close down those sounds now, bring ourselves into a nice quiet position, still with the vision of our beach, gradually coming to the point again where we were at the beginning, where we were looking left and right, down our beach with not an end in sight, and as you do that, let's start to come into the, the mind's eye and just close it down so it's slowly getting either white or dark, whatever it might be, just bringing it in, closing down that vision nice and slowly, nice and gentle. And let's keep the eyes closed there as we start to go into our breathing, if you're not already with that. And in this position, we're just going to close the session down, keeping those eyes closed as we start to, first of all, thank ourselves for being here, taking this time to dedicate to our mental, our physical, our spiritual well-being. even. I'm just going to help us for not just today, but continuing on this week. These sessions repeating over time is really going to help you in the long run. I said, not just physically, but also mentally. And also let's think about back through the session, how you felt like you did today, where your focus was. Did you find yourself losing focus more than normal or keeping that focus as we go through? Just think to yourself in your own mind and then just bring that to next time's session. And you can use that as a tool to help you to remain focused or even just to gather a baseline so you can understand what your regular focus levels are. Again, let's give ourselves a thank. Whether you want to give yourself a back, pat on the back, a round of applause, 
or just a quiet thank you to yourself, however that looks for you. And then whenever you're ready, you can start to open up the eyes, you can start to move the body, coming back to the room. So we are done there.